Hi, my name is Brad. This video will go through the basics of creating a plugin for AppMail. So my idea is I want to highlight uh, mail from my contacts. I thought this might be a nice little neat idea for a, uh, a plugin for the purposes of this little tutorial. So you can see at the moment that uh, my inbox it just has a regular inbox listing. There's no way to easily determine uh, which messages are from people that are in your contacts list and which aren't. Yeah, so I thought it might be nice if I could have like a highlighted row, highlight the rows with a different background color for those users that are contacts, for those senders, sorry, that are contacts, and also for those that are favorites in my contact list, I'd highlight them in a different color again to make them easily easily distinguishable as well. Okay, so let's go on to the actual plugin creation. Okay, so first of all, we need to set up a uh, development environment for uh, creating our plugins. Now, this is simply just a, a folder on your system somewhere, wherever is convenient for you, and you can call it whatever you like. I've called mine AppMail Plugin Dev. Now, inside that directory, this is where we create what we call the company name folder. Now, this is required um, in order to build the um, the plugin package later on. So underneath your root development folder, which in my case is Atmail Plugin Dev, you must create your company name folder. And your company name folder must consist solely of uh, alphanumer alphanumeric characters. So this is letters A to Z and numbers 0 through 9. If you are an individual developer and not working for a company as such, then you can use whatever name you like here, just so long as it only uh, consists of alphanumeric characters. So once you've created your company name folder, underneath that we then create another folder uh, which is using the name of the plugin itself. Now I've decided to call my plugin uh, Mail Highlight. So I've created a folder in my company directory called Mail Highlight. Now if I wanted to create another plugin, um, then I'd also create it within my company directory, and I would just simply create another folder here using the name of the new plugin. Okay, so the plugin folder, it also must only consist of alphanumeric characters. And the convention here is also that we use an uppercase uh, initial character and camel case the rest of it. So within our, our plugin folder, we then need to create a file called plugin.php. Now this is the core plugin file that's, that's required. You can have other content inside here that this plugin.php file loads or uses, but there must be a file called plugin.php, and this defines the actual plugin itself. So now we'll take a look at the content that I have inside my, my plugin file. Okay, so you can see at the top here, I define the class name, and the class name is following the same convention that we've used for the directory structure. So we have the company name, an underscore, the plugin name, an underscore, and then the word plugin. Now this is standardized for all AppMail plugins. You should use your company name, the plugin name, and then the word plugin. The reason for this is that AppMail runs on the Zen framework, and the Zen framework has an autoloader which uses the name of the class, breaks it down in order to find the path to the plugin to the class file itself that it needs to load. And every AppMail plugin must also extend from the AppMail controller plugin. Okay, so here we have some protected properties. These are sort of the, the default properties that we use mostly just to provide information within Web Admin. So the plugin name, an author, a description, a copyright, a URL, any notes. Uh, we have a plugin version string. And here we have a plugin compatibility string. So this defines which versions of AppMail the plugin will be compatible with. And most importantly, here we have the plugin module property. Now this defines which um, which module the plugin will actually be loaded for. So the plugin will only be loaded for the module that's defined in here. So in this case, we want to um, this plugin to be loaded for the mail module. Uh, other valid modules that can be used uh, is admin if you want to create a plugin for the web admin, uh, mobile if you want to create a plugin for the mobile user interface, um, API if you want to extend or modify the AppMail API, 
and finally there is a special case which is called global which means the plugin will be loaded for all and any uh, app mail modules that, uh, that might exist. Okay, below here we have some private uh, properties that I'm using to store some objects and some information that we use later. And let's just move down here and take a look at our first method that we're implementing. So this method here called custom message list indicators this is actually the first of our plugin hooks that we are implementing or making use of. So I'll show you in, uh, in the temp HTML template that renders the mail list. Here you can see a bunch of HTML code. Now this is the code that's rendered for each row in the mail list. So for each email that we have in say our inbox, this HTML will be rendered. And you can see here that a plugin call is made and it is made to the custom message list indicators event or hook if you like and the current view object which is a Zen view object is passed as an argument that we can use within the plugin so you can see here there's, that's where the, the plugin call is made this is made for each row uh, for each email that's in our, in our inbox and here we implement that method which means that this method gets called and we're accepting the view argument and here we are extracting the sender's address, email address from the headers of the current message that's in the view object. Here I'm simply setting up um, some objects for uh, data processing and, and searching of our contacts list. So this one here, this is a new contacts object which allows us to search the contacts database and this one here allows us to process email addresses. Okay, so here I'm processing the email address that we extracted from the headers of the current message. And we basically want to break it down and only use the actual raw email address. So we want to discard any kind of um, personal uh, or real name information. We just want the email. Okay, so here we're doing a search. We're searching our contacts database. And what we're looking for is any contacts whose user email matches the senders and who is also marked as a favorite. And if we have a result, then we then append it to an array that I've created. So we have the UIDs array, and within that we have another, uh, we have a key called from favorites, which contains another array, which we're appending the current messages UID to. So when we find a message, when the current message has been iterated through, um, when the, the plugin hook is called, and we find a match for that user and they are a favorite in our address book we append the UID of that current message to this array and if we if we get a hit here then we, re we return from the function um, and it iterates through to the next next message in the, in the list and we'll call this over again now if we didn't get a hit for a favorite then obviously we don't return so we continue on and we search again but this time we just search for them as a as a contact in our contacts list so just their user email is all we want we don't want to know whether they're a favorite or not and if we get a hit this time we store them in an array we store the UID of their message that they've sent we store that in an array that's called from contacts so basically as we iterate through each row in our in our inbox for, through each message that's been sent we basically building two arrays, one of them containing all the UIDs of messages that were from favorites and the other array containing all the UIDs of messages that were sent from contacts. So once once our message list has been it's completed, iterating through that has, has completed and all the other um, functionality for the, uh, the current request has been completed, the Zen framework then calls the post-dispatch um, event or plugin hook. Now this is called just before or almost just before the uh, the response output gets sent to the browser. Now this gets called for any request that's made. We just want to detect requests that have been made for the folder listing, so the listing of messages in our inbox or other mailbox. So this code here it checks that the current controller name being requested is mail um, note this is a controller name, not the module name. It happens to also be mail. 
and we just do a, a, t a more specific check that it is in fact the list folder messages action that's being requested. This is the only only action and controller that we want to uh, intercept the response for. All the others can simply slip straight through without any kind of uh, manipulation from this plugin, so we don't need to do anything for anything else but a call to list folder messages. So once we've determined that this is in fact the request that we want to handle, now we need to build some JavaScript using the arrays that we created earlier. Okay, so here we're, we're iterating through the from favorites array that we created. And for each of the UIDs that are stored in there, we create some jQuery, which will um, query the DOM for any row that has a, an ID that matches the UID of that message. And then we alter the background color accordingly. And the same thing here, but this is simply for the three pane view. So I've got some code here for the two pane view to alter the background color of favorite of emails from favorites. And the second line in here, it is code for the three pane view which will alter the background color for our messages sent from any favorites as well. The reason for these two different jQueries is that the two pane and three pane views both have a different DOM structure. And again here we are simply doing exactly the same thing. This time though we are iterating through the from contacts array. For each of the UIDs we find again we are searching for any row with that ID and we are changing the background color to suit. So once we've built our JavaScript, we need, then need to uh, append it to the to the response, so that when it gets to the browser, it can do its thing. So what we need to do, this actual response is actually a JSON object. So we need to extract the HTML component from the JSON object, um, and alter that HTML component, and then reset it back into the JSON object response. So this call here, this method get JSON response HTML it is defined in the base class that the plugin extends from and so the return is a string that contains the, the HTML or the body of, of the, the response. So we append the JavaScript that we've created and then we reset that HTML back into the JSON object. And that's it. That's all we need to do for this plugin. So now let's go into how to package up our plugin. So you can see here I'm in within my Atmail plugin dev folder and you can see there's my Atmail company name folder. So for an Atmail plugin we need to package up the company name folder and the plugin folder. So to do that we simply tar it up as such. So use the, the convention here is to use the name of the, um, the plugin as the name of the, the plugin package as well. So mail highlight TGZ, so we use the plugin name with a .tgz extension. That's the convention that we use. And we want to package up the atmail mail highlight folder. So you can see here this is the, the structure and content of the um, the plugin package. And there it is, mail highlight.tgz. That's it. Now that's ready to install in atmail. So let's go to web admin. And we go to the plugins tab. And you can see the plugin's not listed here. So we'll add a plugin. Upload it. And here we go. You can see the information that was defined earlier in the plugin in those um, protected properties. Get displayed here. Okay, plugin successfully installed. Okay, great. So let's now go to our webmail view. And we'll reload this and see what it does. Okay, so you can see that any email from a contact is now highlighted with a different background color. So John, I believe, is a favorite, and Jim is just a contact. And Ness here, she's neither. She doesn't exist in our contacts list, so she just gets the standard old background color. So let's just double check that indeed John is a favorite, and Jim is just a plain old contact. Okay, so here's, here's John and here's Jim. So indeed they both do exist in our contact list. And there's no Ness at test.com, so she wasn't highlighted. Let's look at our favorites. Yep, and there's John in our favorites list. 
So just as we as we expected, John is highlighted differently to Jim, and the one those that uh, aren't in a contacts list at all, they just have the regular background colouring.